one. Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemont, and this is Christopher Draves. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> if you could uh, be so kind and subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, click that bell so you can get notified every time we upload a video. All right. We're just going to cut right into it here. This is our thoughts on the current thing. But since this is going to be a mostly negative video, I thought I'd look at some of the brighter points of the organization right now. There's Which a bright point? Is one, Philip Tomasino first AHL goal. Philip Tomasino second AHL goal. Uh, Rem Pitlick also today had two goals for the Chicago Wolves as well. As much as it pains me to pat the Wolves on the back, our prospects are still developing, you know, so that's a good thing um, at the end of the day for the organization. And that's putting all bias aside. So if uh, me and Admirals fan since 1992 can do it, so can you. Yeah. Um, and now that we got the nice stuff out of the way, you want to start digging into this crater that's turning into the season? All right. <clears throat> I'm going to start off with one thing. The only part the Preds are doing right is winning faceoffs. <clears throat> All right. Their penalty kill. Dead last in the league, 62.8%. I was about to say, they have a penalty kill? All right. It drops any lower. We're going to be below 50% and have the lowest penalty kill in NHL history. We are worse than the Ottawa Senators, Detroit Red Wings, and New Jersey Devils in penalty kill. New Jersey doesn't play hockey. They haven't played in like a month. All right. Power play. We're ranked after tonight's game, 22nd in the league at 14.3%. Yeah, there's 31 teams in the league. That's not good. Uh, right? 31. Uh, the last place teams are about who your normal people um except for minnesota minnesota's normally not there uh they're at 7.1 detroit's at 9.3 if you can't stop detroit's power play we're gonna have issues <coughs> they have a 9.3 percent power play ratio New Jersey's at 11.5, St. Louis 11.4, the Rangers at 13.6, Ottawa at 13.8, Nashville at 14.3. Uh, yeah. All righty. So statistically, the Predators five on five have a plus ratio. Not five on five. They have a minus 32 ratio. Yeah, they have a minus 15 goal differential. Correct. Eesh. That that that's not good, Nashville. All right. So you're five and eight this year. How can you be happy with a five and eight record? Um, we're not. Exactly. And a lot of the fans aren't. A lot of the people in the system aren't. But let's jump into uh, some of the minus sides of this year, all right? So your leading, oh, point, meaning, leading point getter is Philip Forsberg, but his plus minus is a goose egg. So that nullifies every goal he scores. They score one right back when he's on the ice. Mikel Granlin, minus one. Victor Arvidsson, minus one. They're both a have seven points. Matt Duchesne minus eight. What the hell? Yeah, Matt Duchesne seems like I don't understand it, but then again, they don't keep his line consistent whatsoever. Yeah. There's no consistency in the lines. There's no consistency in the lineup. There's no consistency 
on the ice. There's no consistency from the coaching penalty kill uh, from the GM of what he said post the playoffs last year. Um, there's no consistency anywhere on this team, except for from Kelly Yarncroft, who's played seven games, has three points and is a plus three. Yeah, it's also not good if you have a defenseman in your top five in points. Roman Yossi, two goals, four assists. And even he has a negative four. Which is not like him. No. Points are one of the things he's actually pretty good at. Shooting the puck, passing the puck. Yeah, but you're, but typically on a really good team, you don't have a defenseman in your top five as far as point getters, typically. Typically, what they're at least in the about? top have ten. Have you never looked at actual Washington's point getters? John not, Carlson's right under Ovechkin every year. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but how deep of playoffs do they typically go? I mean, they get knocked out in the first round a lot. They do. So does Nashville, but that's beside the point. Yeah. I'm talking about, you're talking about regular season. Regular season, defensemen get points. All right. Let's talk about the underachiever that is Ryan Johansson. All right. All right. There are three players on this team who basically have a bullseye on them from uh, what I've seen from the fan base. All right. Ryan Johansson is one of them. Ryan Johansson is 28 years old, six foot three, right handed shot. He is signed with the Predators through 2024 25 at uh, eight million apiece. All right, let's see if he's worth that eight million. Uh, nope. Uh, over his time with the Predators, he has um, his best season is 61 points, and that is the year that the Predators went to the cup. We lost, but we went there. Um, no, his best season was I he said had 64. Huh? He had 64 points. What? Yeah. Technically, his best season was with Columbus the year before he got traded. Uh, yeah, I suppose, I suppose, yeah. 71. So it's been kind of an up and down for him. But last year, he played 68 games, which was basically the whole season. Had 14 goals, 22 assists, 35 points, and a minus 5. However, in the playoffs, he did pull off 5 points, 4 assists, 1 goal, and a plus 1. Um, This year, so far, he has 4 assists, no plus minus. He has a goose egg. All right. So... Here's the thing with Johansson. He's inconsistent, yes. But he shows up in the playoffs for whatever reason. But he, yeah, he's consistent in the playoffs except for last year, which. Do you really blame him for last year? Because they had that long ass layoff. Um, no, I'm between... actually, I should refer, revert that. Two Since, years ago? It's two years ago, uh, 2018, 2019, when we played the. Jets? Yeah. I think it was the Jets. No, actually Dallas. Remember Dallas knocked us off? The year before last, it was Dallas that knocked us off. Okay, so it was Dallas. And here's the thing about it. Other than that, the Preds have been on a decline since 2018-2019. Um, which is the year after they went to the Cup. Yeah. And it's a, it's a decline. Now, is Johansson part of that? Not 100% sold on it, but I do kind of see where they're coming from. I'm not going to knock the fans. I'm just saying right now I don't fully wholehearted agree. Who else do you think would uh, fall into the cause of the decline? All right, so let's talk about that because next up, Here's a bad part. I like this player a lot. I'm a big fan of his. He's the bearded wonder. Ryan Ellis. I've seen so many people post on 
Fred's groups all over and all over social media. Trade Ellis, trade Ellis, trade Ellis, trade Ellis, trade Ellis. All right. For what? Us underachieving? Our GM putting a bad team on the ice and then expecting a coach to fix the problem who could barely coach his way out of New Jersey? Like on a on a on a realistic note, everything that's happened to this team all falls on the GM. The GM picks the coach, the GM picks the team. The coach's job is to make the team work. If you pick a coach that can't do that, that's your fault as the GM. Especially when you sit here and look at it. Ellis just re-signed with the team last year. Through 2026, 27, he wants to be a lifelong friend, and you just want to kick him to the curb. And he's consistently in the 30 point range. I mean, <clears throat> except for his first couple of years in the system, he's basically been consistently in that 30 point range. And he had 41 two years ago. So at least he's consistently in a decent range. At least 30 points is better than some of the players we've seen. I think the only knock on him is his health, but that's beside the point. Uh, size may be an issue as well in the league. but that's also Too small or too big? Too small. Okay. Uh, 5'10", 181 pounds. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little small. I mean, on the defense side, yes, but uh, let's not go there. Now the final guy on their chopping block. This may sound to come as a surprise to everybody, but Victor Arvidsson. Ooh, yeah, I thought you were going to say uh, Sissons. Nope, it's Victor <clears throat> Arvidsson. Victor Arvidsson, 27 years old, signed through 2023-24. He was a fourth-round draft pick. Um, As it sits... In 2018, 2019, he was injured due to the uh, Bartuzzo incident. Yeah, but he had 48 points that year. The next year... It was a huge in, drop. He was injured due to the Bartuzzo incident again. Bartuzzo hurt him again. Yeah. And it was a huge drop in points. And now this year... But now this year, it's looking like he's getting back on track, and you guys just want to kick him? Yeah, I mean, before, he and before he got hurt, he had 61 points back-to-back -back seasons before the injuries kicked him. Correct. He also leads the team in all-time goals in a regular season in a regular season at 34 and 58 games. Yeah, he had three goals in the playoffs last year. Uh, he had zero points the year before that. And then I do believe 17-18 was their cup run, right? He had five goals, four assists for nine uh, 16, points. 16-17. Oh, well, 16-17, he had three goals, 10 assists for 13 points. So he shows up in the playoffs, too, which is – Something that you can't really uh, hate a guy for because he shows up in the big moment. All right. And, <clears throat> but and, keep going. I'm just trying to contribute to the rant. That's all. All right. The other problem I'm seeing is so many people saying strip Yossi of the seat. All right. Statistically, no. Leadership, I'm not in the locker room. But from what I heard over the last few days, no. He's 30 years old, six foot two, left handed shot, signed through 2027 20, 28. All right. Y'all want to strip him, right? All right. Say you do. Say the, say the Preds do, right? He pulls, say, a Patrick Waugh-style move. Trade me. Now. I will not play for you. But you will have to pay me. All right. So, 
statistically. Nashville Predators, since he's been captain, just since he's been captain, 53 points. 56 points. Last season, 65 points and a plus 22. He was one of five players with a plus on that team last year. And he was a plus 22? Before he became captain, the year uh, they went to the Cup, because Fisher was captain that year, 72 games, 49 points. Year before that, 81 games, 61 points. Year before Maybe that? Year before that, 55 points in 81 games. Year before that, 40 points in 72 games. Year before that, 18. in 18 Play points in 48, 48 games. games. But it was a lockout year, nonetheless, to that extent. So can't really put all your eggs into that basket with the, it was a lockout year. All right, year before that, played for the Predators and the Admirals. Played for the Admirals for like five games. Had four points. 52 games. Just starting his NHL career, 16 points. His first and only year with the Admirals, 69 games, 40 points, 6 goals, 34 assists, and a minus 7. The minus 7 in the AHL, not uncommon to see a minus every game. It's just not. It's the AHL. I mean, yeah. It's where you learn to be a development player or a, a top-tier player. All right? So we get into that. We've talked about underachieving. <laughs> As much as I hate hearing it, Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne's 30 years old, 5'11", center, left, left-handed shot. First round, third overall, 2009. All right. Now that we're good with that. Let's look at the stats, shall we? The statistics show, and this is just saying, okay, Outside of the 2010, wait, scratch that. Outside of the 2013-2014 season, he really ain't an electric goal scorer. I don't know what you're expecting from him, but he's not. 20 goals, that's not really an electric goal scorer. 30 goals, nah, that not really that good either. Oh, man. His good year, he had 47 assists, but only 23 goals. He's better playmaker than you think. <clears throat> but you need to put somebody on that line with him who can shoot the puck. But you put Granlund and Hall out there. Hall is more of a grit player, and Granlund's more of a puck facilitator. So you got two puck facilitators and a guy who's grit. You're not going to put the puck in the net that way. Yeah, Duchesne's best year was uh, probably 15-16 when he was with Colorado. He had 30 goals, 29 assists. Also, that year, the the next season, the Colorado Avalanche finished dead last in the league. He might be a system player, if that's the case. And here's here's my big thing, okay? In the playoffs, he shows up. He does. Last, the year he went for Columbus, 10 games, 10 points. Nashville last year, he played in four games, still had two points. Still 0.5 points per game. Had a minus four, but. But he really doesn't have a lot of playoff experience. In his career, he's only made the playoffs, what, five times? And once, what, uh, both, two of those times were in the in the OHL, Ontario Hockey League, with the Brampton Battalion. Yeah, hold on. Well, two at the Battalion. That's your one with the Avalanche, two with the Avalanche, one with the Blue Jackets, and then last year at the Predators. He's been around for a while, so that's about, about half of his career he actually makes the playoffs. Yeah. I, I just 
the the thing I I see here, and and I'm gonna get into this fairly quickly. All right, all right. I'm willing to say this right now, and hear me out, Preds fans, when I say this. All right, I'm gonna get into something that you may not want to hear. Dante Fabro. Dante Fabro is 22 years old. He's six foot tall, right handed shot, signed till 2020, 2021. So he's got to be re signed at the end of this year. But he's young, so I would do it. All right. He was captain at Boston University. 33 points and 38 games. Then he comes to the Predators, plays one game, in, uh, four games in the regular season, has a goal. Plays six games in the playoffs. Honestly. Has one assist and a plus two. The next year plays full season for the Predators. Has five goals, six assists, 11 points, minus seven. All right. I see improvement. How about you? All right. Next, he played in the playoffs. No stats, minus one. All right. You had no stats in your minus one. That's actually not that bad when you got knocked out in the first round. Yeah. All right. This year, one goal, two assists, three points. In a shortened season, he's going to eclipse the, eclipse the points he had in his rookie year. Yeah. If he keeps going on the clip he's looking at. All right. So at that point, you go, okay, so maybe it's not the defense. All right. I hate myself for doing this because I'm a goalie. I'm supposed to like the goalies. But you see Saros, man. 25 years old, force of Finland. 5'10", 197 pounds, catch the left hand, signed through this year. Uh, he will be a UFA next year, so he can go wherever he wants if he wants to leave. Just in Nashville alone. All right. His first year with the Admirals, he posted a... 38 games, 2.24 goals against, and a save percentage of 0 0.920. Played one game for the Predators, 3.10 goals against, averaging a 0 0.870 save percentage. One game, he was a rookie. Yeah, you let it slide. All right. Next season, he plays 21 games for the Preds, 2.35 goals against, averaging a 0.923 save percentage. The next year, they dismantled, not the next year, the year after that, they dismantled the um, Preds defense in a way with getting rid of PK. All right. So in 2017-2018, they got rid of PK uh, right at the draft after that year. All right. So after that year, his statistics dropped by. Point zero one five. Then the next year it drops by zero point zero one. This year, after getting rid of practically everybody who else who was in the system from that team, a point eight eight one. With a three and three record. So, is there any reason why people aren't uh, trying to call for the head of Colton Sissons by chance? I was just looking at his stats, and I don't know the way they oh, the way they've been uh, really getting on players. Uh, do you think he could be out the door? No. Well, you think he's still too young? It's not that he's young. He's 27 years old. The factor of it 
all plays into Colton Sissons doesn't really make that many boneheaded plays. Okay. In 2018-2019, he was a plus 20 with 30 points. The next year he played. That's what I was looking at. That's what I was looking at while you were talking about the goalies. Because, yeah. and, and here's the thing. I'm not going to talk about Pekka today because Pekka's on his way out the door anyways. Yeah. He's done as much as he can do in this year's. He's done as much as he can do in his career. I don't think it would be any system that he could he'll benefit from at this point. Even if he got traded just for a cup, it, it wouldn't do him no good. He wouldn't play. It's just one of those things. But let's just put it this way. All right. So Colton Sissons this year already has two goals and a zero plus minus. Yeah. Well, that's better than the 2013-2014 uh, season where he played 17 games, had four points. Yeah. I, was just, I was just looking around to see if there's any uh, people that should be on the way out. Now that we've actually took a deep dive, I don't know. I think we uh, found the culprits that we should probably think about getting rid of. Well, here's the one thing I will say. And this is one thing that kind of hinders things, okay? Pekka, no movement clause. Yossi, no movement clause. Okay, so those two aren't going anywhere. Which is fine. I mean, technically, Pekka is going somewhere. He's going to the Hall of Fame. Because I can't see him on the roster for much longer. He's probably going to retire. All right. Now... Boyle, you said you signed Mark Vorveski, because that's the way I've been hearing him pronounced now. I was waiting for this. All right. You signed him to fix the penalty kill. How's he going to do that if he can't stay out of the damn box? If I had hair left up here, I'd be yanking it out because of him. Okay, I can't wear a hat because yeah. I don't want to mess up the poof ball. All right. We're talking. All right. Barvesky, he has one assist, 29 penalty minutes. Zero plus minus. 29 penalty minutes. You'd have to add up the penalty minutes of like five, six players just to equal what he did. Twenty-nine penalty minutes. Let's look at his stats. Million. Yeah, I want to see his stats and what attracted him to uh, what attracted Portal. Let's see here. Nothing. Minus, special. minus, minus, minus. One point eighteen five, eleven, three, two, eleven, eight. One. Nothing. What the hell was Poyle thinking? So you know the numbers I was reading off are his total points. Yeah, I don't know what the hell Poyle was thinking, but I agree. Stupid decision to pick him up. All right. Nick Cousins on the other side of that whole fix the penalty kill thing. Yeah. All right. Fairly gritty and feisty player. I don't mind him getting in the penalty box half as much. All right. But I kind of want to say this. All right. The man played 17 playoff games last year. He's been in Montreal, Arizona, Philadelphia. And then Las Vegas. Yeah. I mean. Last year. Yeah. And. Here's the thing. Everywhere he goes, there's one consistent. 20 points or more. Outside of the... The last year in Montreal. Well, last year, that would be an outlier. Well, no. Last season, he had technically 25. Uh, he had three points with Vegas and 22 with Montreal. Okay, yeah, and then... 
Well, Arizona in 1916, 30, well, 10 with the Flyers, 38 with Lehigh Valley of the age. Uh, All right. Yeah. I'm also to note this. I'm going over all of Hoyle's free agency stuff before I get into why I just am getting irritated with him. All right. Eric Hall, 29 years old, six foot forward. He does play center or wing. Yep. Not overly picky on where he lines up, just line he up. He just wants to play. That's his thing. He just wants to play. All right. What are we paying him? Okay, 1.7, so not that much. All righty. He has four points, which is more than he had with the Panthers all of last season. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's halfway on the total of what he had with Vegas in their, his second season there. Over half. He's three points away. 15 games. If he could get three points in 15 games, he's got that tied. I, mean, I don't think he's ever going to match his first year in Vegas, the 2017-2018 uh, season. He had 29 goals, 26 assists, but he also had a negative 16. That was Vegas's expansion year. All right. And finally, last but not least, the Nick Bonino for Luke Coonan. Trade. All right. So Luke Coonan's 23 years old, signed through 2021 22. So we got another year. Johnny thing this year, but at least he's young. He has two goals in nine games with a minus one. Okay. All right. I'm going to say this right now. All right. He's well coached. Um, from the American side of hockey. Yeah, University of Wisconsin. Yeah, well coached. University uh, U.S. National Development Program and that St. Louis AAA Blues 16U team. Uh, you anyone care to guess who was on that team in 2012, 2013? I don't know, shoot. If I remember correctly, it is one Rocco Grimaldi. Oh, you mean the only uh, Predator player to score tonight? Yeah. No, I stand corrected, actually, on that. I thought he was part of that, but he it's just a laundry list of guys who are all on that team. I'm actually going to pull up that roster for you right now. Because Luke Coonan is a good hockey player who right now is just getting the heck kicked out of him. And I'm going to tell you, they're hitting him hard. They know he's good. Because he's been getting thrown around a little bit lately. All right. That year, okay, all alone. Matthew Kachuk, Luke Coonan, what? Yeah, that's about it <laughs> on that team. We're trying to make his team sound like it was four great players, but Matthew Kachuk was like a great. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but I, I'm, I guess I'm just saying that, you know, when you really look at how everything's gone so far this year for the Predators, I mean, it's to a point now where they're 13 games in. We should be hitting full stride, all right? Yeah. So we're looking at the 
Um, shots per game are 31 on an average. Their PK is at 62.8. Their power play is 14.3. But their net power play is 12.2. Um, their goals against per game is 3.54. Their goals for per game is 2.31. You're not going to win that way. They have one shutout this season. They have one overtime win this year. And they don't have any overtime losses. When they actually, lose, they have two regulation wins and two overtime wins, and then they have that win in a shootout that they did. Yeah. So basically, as it sits with this team, as it sits, uh, when it comes to overtime and shootout, they win because they have no overtime uh, losses. All their losses are in regulation. I'd be happy if they lost in overtime. You know, yeah. get some points. Get some points. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what got the uh, Admirals into the playoffs. So, uh, what was that last year, or the year before last? The year before last, I swear. I was losing my mind our first year, I think it was, with Carl Taylor. Yeah, that was our first year as coverage, too. Yeah, um, first year at the show. Um, uh, I was losing my mind with all the OT games. I was just like, oh, I want to go home. But you know you were having fun because it led us to the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> And net kicker, and net kicker, and net kicker. All right, anyways, uh, so anything else you want to say about this? I mean. All right, so now that I got into all of that, Hoyle, look, you were good five years ago. Five years ago, you were building this team towards going to a cup. You got it brought in James Neal for with, with the trade of Patrick Hornquist. You traded Martin Erat and Michael Latta for Phil Forsberg, one of the most lopsided trades in hockey history. <sighs> I don't know what Washington's manager, general manager was thinking, but he probably didn't have a job much longer after that. Um, I will say this, though. Look, I don't, I like everything you've done for this organization because you've done a lot. You've made Nashville, you know, you've made Nashville a hockey town with the players that you've brought in. You've made our show's slogan and Milwaukee's slogan very, very, very relevant. Because I'll tell you one thing, if you don't play a game for the Admirals, it could be one game. You could just get sent down here for one game, score a hat trick, and get called up. But that is the, the way it should be. These guys should be getting time. And I think you lost yourself along the way because Dante Fabro should have spent at least, at least a month in the AHL. At least a month. I, I, he's not strong enough. He's not big enough. He has no proper coaching to the pro game. Uh, Boston College did not have him ready. You cannot jump from the college game to the top premier pro league. You can do it from juniors because there's a hundred other guys who are just as talented as you are. You could do that in the AHL where there's just a, a hundred other guys who are just as good as you are. You cannot do that from college. 
college, it is very few and far that you find that stud star player. Yeah, college is usually that step uh, right before junior, or it's supposedly the same level as juniors, but it ain't. Here's the thing. I've said this for many years, and it rang true so much with college players. Craig Smith spent, got called up to Nashville right away out of the University of Wisconsin. The next year, about a month into the season, the Preds fans were calling for his head because he did not know where to be. He was slow and behind. He went to Milwaukee for half a season. By the end of that, he was, over the last, what, five, six years, he's still in the NHL. So, I mean, the system obviously works. Why are you moving away from it? And, and then and then you have guys down here like Carrier who could be helping you, but you have them in the AHL again, where you promised him an NHL shot. You expect guys to want to play for you? That's another part. If you give your word to somebody, you keep it. it it's just one of those things. If you say, hey, you're going to be getting a shot at the roster and you're not even on the dang taxi squad. I'm normally not one to stick up for Carrier, but ever since I did bash him for one whole year, he stepped it up a hundred times. And that's that's a problem in this system. If you're going to step it up a hundred times and then you keep guy, playing guys who don't step it up. You've got to play the guys who want to play to win. If they don't want to play to win, they got to go. If you don't want to win, go. If you don't want to win here, go. If you don't want to be here, why did you sign here? Because of the paycheck? If this is all it is is a paycheck, you're in the wrong game. And they can't use COVID as an excuse because nobody put a gun to their head and say that they have to play in COVID. They could have opted out. They chose to play because they knew they needed the money for their family, so they can't use that as an excuse. I just wanted to get that out of the way first because that might be an excuse that a player tries using, but nobody held a gun to the player's head. The player is playing by their choice. They could have opted out. Oh, like Tuka Rask, where they would have, Boston would have had a heck of a chance actually winning the, the whole thing. Yeah, and look all the crap. Yeah. I'm just saying, Tuka thought that his family was, literally said, my family is more important. And it. And yet and he I'm ended not. up going to Boston anyways. And then he still won. But. Hey, I'm not going to argue with anybody about this stuff. I'm just saying that the way this team looks, it doesn't look good. And look, if it's going to be a rebuild, at least be honest. Don't I say just hope, I, I just hope this video is not us overreacting. Like, what if somehow, like some magical way, this lights a fire under them? Hey, I've done it before. Because it's still technically early because they have – how many more games to go? Like 40 plus. So it's still kind of early, but it ain't looking good currently. But it's like not. Said, it's not looking good. But like we also said, if you dig yourself a hole too deep, it may come back at a point where it's just, I mean, that's the part. You have to look at the division we are in. You have teams like Tampa Bay, Columbus, uh, Columbus and Cleveland. <laughs> Let's not even go Columbus, there. Columbus, Tampa Bay. Uh, you got Dallas. The Blackhawks, uh, who I, I'm sorry, anytime you have Patrick Kane, you have Kane, you have a chance to win. I mean, yeah, Patrick him. Kane's a good player. He is. Um, you know, and and there are other teams in this division who give may give the and Florida is they're a huge improvement over the last couple of years. Carolina's no slouch. So look, if you can't if you can't turn this around, even soon, Columbus is actually playing fairly decent. I mean, they got some issues over there, over there in Columbus currently, but they're still a decent team. And that's part of it. Columbus is technically in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, they are. 
and and here's the thing like when everything comes push comes to shove right you have to make a decision what's best for your organization look i'm not saying fire the man tomorrow but i'm also saying that i wouldn't be surprised if they did yeah. it's it's pretty much you got my number if it happens hit me up we'll we'll do a video tomorrow if it happens i don't think it will but if it does you know i'm just saying you know there's there's a, a million ways to fix this solution, but there's only one real way to fix this solution, and that's getting rid of the longest tenured guy in the organization, and it ain't a player. Mm, it's Poyle. And it's Poyle. And that would be a reality check to every man in that locker room who does not have a no-movement clause because Duchesne's doesn't kick in for another three years, so... He could be out the door. He may be out the door if 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 they as far as claws kicks in. If 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 they can poil and the guy goes, Well, you're not performing. Bye. Oh. It's just one of those things. And and here's the thing. If you're gonna do this, you're actually kind of picking a good year to get rid of your Top, if you do start trading away all the top pieces in this organization, okay, or some of them, it, 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 as it were, to be said, some of them, yeah, don't okay. get rid of them all, but you know, get rid of some just to shake things up, okay. You're actually doing it in a kind of a good year because after this season, there's that Seattle thing coming. That Seattle expansion draft, yeah, yeah. Gives you more of a chance to basically uh, dish out uh, not so good players. Unlike the year where we went to the uh, cup and huh, had to give up James Neal. And look at him now. Here's the thing about James Neal. <laughs> it didn't work out too well for him. He was a system player. Definitely fit Nashville's system. It does not fit anywhere else. If they made a move to get him back, I could guarantee these team turn, turns around a little. But I'm not willing to eat that $8 million contract. There ain't no way. Not happening, Jack. I'm not happening. I wouldn't do it. He's too old, and the numbers have dropped too much. It's just not worth the money. Oh. And, and that's that's part of where we have to actually look at this. Some of these guys that people are wanting us to go and get in free agency, they just aren't worth the money. But, I mean, at the end of the day, last and final note, if Heinz is a failure, that all falls on Poyle. Because that means Laviolette's failure and Heinz's failure are the same. And there's only one person that's still left from that, and that's the GM. Hmm. I mean, what more can I say? Oh. I mean, it, 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 it's we're one step away from being a good team or a dumpster fire. Yeah. But. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. Dude, we went on this rain for like, a, what, almost a half hour? I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure you got everything off your chest. Uh, I'll have more on uh, Thursday. <laughs> yeah, if we have to do a part two, we have to do a part two. But it's like two in the morning. Let's wrap it. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, it is getting late here, guys. So we will be seeing you tomorrow when we wake up. Yeah. Go over to YouTube. Give us a subscribe. Also, uh, check out our video later on. Technically today, we will be covering the Florida Everglades versus the South Carolina Stingrays. Yeah, we got more content coming for you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.